Rosenbaum, a Middle East analyst, and Harlan Ullman, a U.S. foreign relations analyst and the author of Anatomy of Failure, Why America Loses Every War It Starts. Thane, I want to start with you. What do you make of the rhetoric between the Trump administration and this Russian diplomat and, of course, the chance that there might be some tanglement there between the United States and Russian forces in Syria? Well, David, we've now officially entered a new phase of trash-talking schoolyard diplomacy. Um, and it's, uh, <laughs> it's enormously entertaining and frightening at the same time. Uh, the missiles that we might launch might be smart, but I'm not sure whether the strategy is. Um, I do think there is also some theater involved here, and I think you're quite right when you point out social media. Things are done nowadays, no matter what President Trump said, I wouldn't telegraph it. President Trump telegraphs everything on media. I mean, every he is, his whole life, it's a reality TV show of tell, exploring what he's going to do next. So I just think that we shouldn't be surprised. I think it's not a bad outcome. Uh, I was on your show a few days before, and I, I feel that a, a military response is necessary. Uh, I do think that the words of the Russians, look, they're there since 2015, uh, 13, uh, 2015 rather, you know, they've militarily intervened in, in Syria. So they're there. They have uh, naval presence, uh, they have air defense systems, they have combat aircraft. The real question is, can we actually engage in a, a precision strike and not hit anything Russian? Mm -hmm. And I'm not so sure we can do that. Harlan, speaking of social media, the president did this diplomatic dance on Twitter today, on one hand going after Russia, on the other hand sort of extending an olive branch to them, saying we can still work together on some economic issues in the arms race. Is that a good strategy? Do the Russians even care at this point, or have we crossed a line? Teddy Roosevelt had it right, speak softly and carry a big stick. What's going on on Twitter is nonsense and it's dangerous. If Donald Trump had said, we are investigating what's happened. We will hold those people accountable and we will take whatever steps are necessary. That would have been sufficient. Right now, there are all sorts of problems. One, as was pointed out, how do you deconflict to make sure that Russian troops are not engaged? What do you want as the outcome? What are you trying to achieve from any kind of a strike? Do you want to debilitate Syria? Do you want regime change? Or do you just want to be punitive? There are really limited actions that we can take to impose the kind of penalties that we would like to see. So we need, first of all, a strategy. We need to know what the rules of engagement are, and we need to know what the outcome is that we are likely to achieve. We cannot influence the civil war in Syria. We are playing a very minor role. And so what the president should hope to achieve, uh, he hasn't stated. And quite frankly, he ought to keep his trigger finger off Twitter because he's liable to get us into more trouble than not. But My Harlan, on that point, and look, Harlan, and on, on taunts. that point, I want to stop you right there just for a sec. And, and look, all your points well taken, but is there something to be said about the rest of the world possibly seeing the president of the United States as irrational, given normal diplomatic protocols, and perhaps that keeps Russia and Syria a little bit off balance, which may benefit the Trump administration? I think that your logic is too rational. I think most people, uh, certainly abroad, take a look at Donald Trump and they are really scared because they don't trust his judgment, they don't trust him, and they don't trust his experience. I would say there's a better way to approach this. Why have we not declared Bashar al-Assad a war criminal and taken him to The Hague? It strikes me as dereliction of, of, of thinking that we haven't looked at different outcomes. But we go to the military response initially when there were far more important political responses, make Assad label a war criminal and work from there. And if you That's are it. going to take military action, make sure it's well thought out. And quite frankly, Jim Mattis, the Secretary of Defense, and Joe Dunford, the Chairman, are very, very professional and able. But I'm afraid I don't know what an attack is going to achieve except punishing, and I don't know what happens after the attack has taken place, even though I think that if Assad is held responsible for this, some action must be taken. I would argue label him a war criminal first. Okay, but to David's point, there are some that say President Trump, the reason why North Korea is even wanting to talk to President Trump is because President Trump acts irrational and they're scared of him. But I want to just, I want to ask a question. I want to play devil's advocate here for a second, Thane. The Russians say it's not them. The Syrians say it's not them. Could it be, if you're looking at this, why would, if Assad is winning this war already, why would he do something, gas his own people, that would turn the whole West against him? Well, he's clearly demonic, and we've seen it. I mean, we shouldn't try to, what we always do is we, we try to read in Western values into a part of the world that just doesn't operate that way. For us, that looks crazy. For him, look, you know, he's trying to finish this war. 
Uh, it's true the tide turned for him when the Russians invaded, but he wants this over, and if this is what's going to do it, he's going to accomplish it. I do think that whatever le le levels of investigation they've already conducted, they do think that the signature, the, fo the, the footprint of, of sarin gas suggests that this is Assad and that, that this is not some other organization. But I, going back to David's point, look, let me just say, I do think that there's something important morally to send a message uh, even if it's not about regime change. It's simply the equivalent of bombing the tracks to Auschwitz. I think that this is very important, and I like the fact that liberal democracies, United States, France, and, uh, and England would all be engaged in that. But I also think Shana's point uh, to Harlan is an interesting one. You know, the Israelis used to say, we're not going to let the uh, Arabs out crazy us. You know, which is an interesting phrase, which is to, which in the context of this is to say, you know, maybe Trump's behavior, irrational as it is, scary as it is, demonstrates to both the North Koreans and to the Russians that he's not kidding around mm -hmm. and that this is not the Obama administration. We don't draw red lines that we just pretend that they're just there until you challenge them. Here's a guy that's actually saying, I'm going to do it. I, do I think it's wise? I think it's scary to watch. But it might be that what you said is true, that he might be keeping them off balance and keeping them honest with this kind of rhetoric. we got to leave it there. Thane Rosenbaum, Middle East analyst, and Harlan Ullman, U.S. foreign relations analyst, thank you both. We appreciate it. Still ahead, there